Welcome back. The Commerce Department just announcing that deal to build around $80 billion in nuclear reactors. The agreement involves Brookfield Asset Management along with Westinghouse Electric and Canada's Cameco. Sarah Eisen talked with Brookfield's Bruce Flat at the FII conference in Riyadh and started by asking him about the deal. President Trump and uh, the Commerce Secretary Lutnick uh, announced a number of deals uh, for the Japanese fund to invest in the United States and uh, the one that we're involved in is uh, an 80 billion dollar investment into new nuclear plants in the United States and uh, we're super excited about this and, and probably the most important thing isn't the 80 billion but we needed to have scale to be able to build supply chain across America and the nuclear industry had, had, had gone downhill and just nobody was building plants and to be able to build the first one you need to have the, the belief in, and the supply chain needs to believe that you're going to build out the whole business and it's going to be and it's going to sustain itself for a long period of time. So the whole idea behind this is that we're going to build out the new industrial platform for nuclear in the United States and all those suppliers will build it out and we'll be able to have a whole new business in America based off of nuclear and that's why the U.S. government is backing it and we're, we're very excited How about is it. it structured? So do you, do you line up financing? The, uh, so the U.S. government is buying $80 billion of plants uh, from us and... From Westinghouse, which you from own Westinghouse, a little bit less, or a little more we, than 50%? We own half, half yeah. of it okay. and uh, with our partner Cameco and uh, so Westinghouse will build, the pl will build all the plants. The U.S. government will own them. Um, and they're, they're, they're going to be financing them and so we're just going to be the builder of those plants Wh whereas on last week we announced another transaction which is with South Carolina and we Brookfield are going to be buying the plant Westinghouse will be reviving the plant and rebuilding it and we will actually own the, that plant with uh, a number of our clients. Is this the new way that, that you're sort of thinking about structuring deals? I mean, th this whole idea of public-private partnership with the U.S. government really taking some big swings is new. I, I, look, I just think uh, this government is focused on uh, less regulation, um, more business, uh, lower taxes. And, uh, and they also want to, if they're going to lean into investments, if you can convince them that we're going to reindustrialize a business in America, they're going to be behind it. And, uh, but they want the people of America to participate if there's great success. And, uh, and we have no, I have no problem with that. And this is just, it's, I'd say it's more entrepreneurial than it might have been in past. But I think the U.S. Uh, people uh, definitely are owed something if they help us achieve what we want to achieve. And, and equally so, uh, we'll get our share too because it, uh, it should be very successful for How us. How long will it take to build these nuclear reactors? You know, the first one that we're going to build in South Carolina is a rebuild and it'll be on by 2030. Uh, these other ones will take six, seven, eight years, but you need to, you need to start. But, but what the hope is that as you keep building and as you build supply chain and you get more experience, we're going to be able to bring the time down over time. And uh, I think over time we're going to get better and better at it. We used to be in America, we used to be really good at building plants. Um, we lost that, and this is going to uh, re-energize the whole business. It is interesting that you bought Westinghouse out of bankruptcy back in 2018. What, what, what did you see that nobody else did at the time as far as the future of nuclear energy? Yeah, look, it, it's, it's baseload, it's clean, um, it's extremely efficient, uh, it's very safe today. And, uh, and because of that, it was going to be needed in the world. And it was, it was inevitable it was going to be, ne it was going to be needed. It just took uh, a revolution in artificial intelligence for everyone to figure out, yes, we have to have it. Because remember, what we, we're going to do is double the grid, the energy use, in the next 15 years. Double. It may be more than double. Uh, and, and we're going to need all the power we can get. Yes. We need solar. We need gas. Uh, we need nuclear. We need hydro. We need all of it. And uh, it's going to be extremely important that we focus on it. And uh, so when we, we invest into it, because we are, our business is about looking at things, seeing a long-term vision, making sure you protect your downside. And usually the, the good things uh, take care of themselves. So hence the Bloom Energy deal, which was also announced a, a few weeks ago. Fuel cells. I mean, it's all, it's all about what you're talking about, the demand for power, which is skyrocketing. So... Uh, 
uh, the, the data centers used to be, when we built data centers 10 years ago, they were 50, 100 megawatts. Today, we have customers taking a thousand, one gigawatt from us for one data center. So these were enormous uh, amounts of power required and the capital, why this is, can only be done by a certain few, is the capital for that, if you take a thousand megawatts or one gigawatt of power, the building and the infrastructure and the chips and the servers that go inside of it for an AI factory is $50 billion. This is a lot of money, so it can't be done by everyone. There's few, but not that many, and it's highly sophisticated, and people always talk about, um, is there uh, too much? Too many uh, data centers? Too many. Is it, is, people ask, are there too is many? It, and uh, some people think it's a bubble. It's not, and it isn't, because it's hard to do this. Everyone says they're going to build something. It's not easy to build. You need to find the connectivity, you need to find the power, you need to build the buildings, you have to get the chips, and you need to have 50 billion per AI factory. This is not, this can't be done by everybody. And remember, most of these are being contracted to the major technology companies, and they all today have credit better than most countries in the world. And therefore, your credit counterparties are almost as good or better than a U.S. Treasury. But one thing I hear sometimes is that we're building so many data centers. First of all, they take a really long time to come to fruition. And second of all, the, the technology will change and get more efficient, and then will we be stuck you're with not, too many? You're not building enough data centers, first point. Second, the, the data centers, the shell, the chips are inside, they go away in five years. You amortize those in five years. So that, that, uh, that will go away and the chips are gonna, are gonna change, and you're, you'll, but you've amortized them in five years. So we're not building enough. As much as we're building today, we're not even building half of what we can, and it, you can't build enough. Like, I actually have the opposite. Um, Why do you say that? I, I have the opposite answer for you is, yeah. the countries in the world uh, used to build roads and railways, and today what they need to build is AI infrastructure. And if you do not, in a, in a country, if you do not have sovereign and AI infrastructure to be able to lay the pipe for your companies, they will leave. And that's what America's figured out first. That's what this, with the administration, that's what the deal we just did with them is. And, and there's going to be a number more because we need power and we need AI da data centers in America. And every country needs them. Um, and if you don't have it, you'll be behind. Are you talking to a lot of other countries about yes. this too? Yes, we're in Sweden, we're in France, uh, we're talking in Canada, we're in many other countries in the world and they're behind, remember, because the eight largest technology companies are centered in the United States and the center of AI today is in the United States. And, but, but eventually it's moving out and countries are going to have to have, have figured out they have to have this layer of infrastructure which used to be a pipeline or a road or a or a, a railway, uh, it's now um, the digital infrastructure in the country, and uh, and we're behind. Well, so what so uh, what does it mean for Brookfield? I mean, you're in so many different businesses. It's amazing: private equity, private credit, real estate, retail, um, inf insurance. You know, infrastructure. How much of the business is now pivoted toward this AI data center build out? So. Uh, we're a diversified business, and we try to have many, we try to build out all these things, because our clients want them. And, uh, and they're all similar. They're all similar businesses. We run real assets around the world for our clients and build them out. But from time to time, we heavy up on certain sectors when, they're, when capital is flowing to them in excess of what it other, in other areas. And sometimes it's, uh, one area and sometimes it's a different area. Today it happens to be the, 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 where the major amounts of money are flowing is into artificial intelligence infrastructure and into power to drive that infrastructure. And that's where the, the big heavying up is. And, and it's not that we're not running all of our other businesses. You know, our real estate business is, we just raised a big fund for it. We're, I know, I'm uh, curious we're about We're raising, it. A, you know, we're raising a number of private equity funds. We've, we have our normal infrastructure fund which is the largest in the world for just, I'll call it baseline infrastructure, but, but we separated out AI infrastructure into another fund because this fund is supposed to be diversified and you can't engulf a fund with AI infrastructure. So we had to have one specifically for that. Got it. And we did that with our transition renewables business 
uh, five, five years ago, and it's been highly, highly successful. And, and I'd say that's given us a huge advantage um, to be able to do the things like Westinghouse. That's where we had it originally in our private equity fund. We found Cameco to come in and partner with us, and we put it into our renewables fund, and, uh, and that's the owner today, and they've been highly successful. So clearly it. data centers are the hottest part of, of real estate, but what about office? Because you're exposed there. I think you told me last year that we were bottoming. So what does activity look like now? Uh, activity, most companies in the world are short space. They're all calling their people back. They have no desks. They need more space. Rents are up 50% in most buildings in major cities in the world. Uh, they will be up another 50% soon. Interest rates are coming down, both on the short end and on the long end. And that is going to energize all real assets, but in particular real estate, because it got hurt the most in this cycle because so of COVID and rates. Are you investing in office? I, you know, we're, we're always investing uh, in real estate. And, um, you know, our main, our, our, our opportunistic fund uh, mostly has buy sell change, so it's it's uh, more opportunistic type of real estate, but um, uh, not. But we're 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 uh, we're doing office today as well. And it's not just like the highest tier office you that's know, our, working. Our our, um, our main uh, focus in everything we do, not just office, not just real estate, but everything, is partner with the best and own the best. We don't. We try not to own second tier stuff. Uh, once in a while we buy a portfolio and it has some second tier stuff and over time we get rid of it all. Our goal is to own the best in the world and, and today in particular in office people want to be in the best and they're almost 100% full and, uh, and they're getting fuller uh, and, uh, and, rent, and rents are going up. Other hot topic has been private credit and some worries about soft spots in the market. It's been big growing business for you. I know you recently bought the rest of Oak Tree, for instance. Do you still see as much opportunity in private credit as you did? Yeah, so the, uh, the f probably one of the major things that occurred in finance in the past 25 years is that the banks are using more their balance sheets to originate, hold, for a short period of time, sell. Uh, and just move, move, move loans off the balance sheet. And, and what came about is private groups like ourselves who are actually holding uh, loans longer term, and that's called private credit. And the, whole, the business has gone from zero to two trillion dollars, and it's going to go to four trillion, and six trillion, and eight trillion, and 10 trillion. It's not stopping. And uh, no financial institution that makes loans never has some problems. They always have some. Uh, but there's no issues in private credit. Uh, this is a business that's going to keep growing, and, uh, and it will be very, very large uh, in the longer term.